You're breathtaking. Serious. Those who've explored abandoned buildings that went seriously wrong. What happened? Drunk and lonely in Korea, wandered into an abandoned construction site that I hadn't seen anyone working on all winter. The night air is cold and frigid and there's echoes of cars passing by. Using the light of my old shitty phone I walk inside. Look around. The place is empty and I'm too drunk to be scared. Stumble upstairs. Wandering around. Slip because I'm drunk and my ass hits the concrete and I drop the phone and I'm in total darkness. I reach over. Pick up the phone and see that right in front of me. Where I was walking. The ground gave way to a 10 foot drop at the bottom of which are a series of rebar bars jutting out of the concrete. I could have stumbled and impaled myself on the measly. I used to go through abandoned buildings with my dad, a fireman in near west suburban Chicago. We ran into a bunch of homeless guys burning the coating off wire. My dad and the police moved them on from the building. Later that night they were doing the same in another building down the block, which led to a three alarm fire and two abandoned factories burning to the ground. When I was a teenager and some friends and I had nowhere to live. We found an abandoned house in a fairly dodgy suburb to live in. One of the people I was with said it used to be a drug dealer's place and he had left town indefinitely, so we figured we would be safe to squat there for a while. It had super high fences which we had to climb to break in through the back door, and the first thing we saw was an old dog chain that had been snapped and there was dried blood around it on the concrete. It's not super relevant, but it gives you an idea of how grungy the place looked. We all slept in one bedroom out the back that had no front-facing windows and when we left during the day, we would hide our backpacks in the ceiling through a hole we found. At night we kept all the lights off. One night we got awoken by a massive banging on the front door, like really loud thumping that reverberated through the entire house. Think like if the cops were desperately trying to get the attention of someone in an apartment. There was nothing shouted, so we knew it wasn't police. We just stayed as quiet as we could until it went away. The next morning when we left there was a huge knife shoved through the wood at the front, embedded halfway down the blade. We left it there. The girl that was with us decided it was not safe there. So she took off the next day. I don't remember where she went, but she didn't come back. She probably went to one of the shelters in the city. Me and the remaining guy went out a day or two later to get some food. And when we got back, we found that the windows had all been smashed in by rocks thrown through the windows. The remaining furniture had been trashed, beds flung onto their sides, couches pushed apart with their cushions ripped. Someone had clearly been looking for something. We said frick it, booked it out of there and moved to a park. Way more open, but significantly less terrifying went to an abandoned water park with some photography buddies, crawled through the hole in the fence, opened the front door and a cop was just sitting at the desk like he was here to give us pool passes. Yes, he was a real cop. He called for another unit to come to us and then they just asked us what and why we were there then let us go on our day. Not in the water park sadly. Some friends and I went exploring in an old abandoned slave church in the deep south Georgia woods. There were graves dug up in the cemetery and the church itself was all falling apart. There was one hallway with a room in the back that had the door cracked. I was the first one in the hallway and as I got to the door to the room in the back, I heard someone in the room go SHH, went to turn and run out of there but my girlfriend at the time was leaned against the wall in a daze looking at the ground. I had to grab her hand and pull her to get her going. It was weird. One summer when I was a kid it somehow got popular to explore the storm drainage system underneath our neighborhood. Yes, like the ones in it, but just boring concrete. These were the round tunnels made from pre-made pieces. Getting into the pipes required crawling through a tight fit for 15 to 20 feet, but after that you could stand. As you explored the system you'd find areas that were big enough to drive a golf cart through, though it would have been impossible to get one there. Occasionally there would be odd structures like grates that looked like prison bars that only covered half the pipe. Very rarely there would be light coming in from a grate in the road above, but most of the time we needed flashlights to see anything at all. Every single sound was nerve-wracking, because technically there shouldn't have been any sounds other than running water down there. Of course, we weren't the Goonies, so we didn't have a map or the sense to make one as we went along. Most of the local kids had gotten to know the system well enough to navigate though, and we figured out that if you got lost, you just always chose the turn that led to a bigger pipe because the biggest one ran about a half mile outside the neighborhood and emptied, in a 15-foot plunge, into a local pond and creek. Well one day my brother, who was essentially fearless, and some friends decided to go a different direction from the main junction to explore a tunnel none of us had ever ventured to. I admit it, I was too scared. I don't know why on that day I was creeped out, but I was. So two friends and I stayed in the junction while my brother and his two friends went exploring. After they were gone for 10 or 15 minutes we heard terrified shouting and running footsteps echoing down the tunnels, coming toward us. My friends ran. I wanted to run, but there was my brother down there. Finally, through the dark tunnel I heard one of my brother's friends shout, go. We all ran the big tunnel, because instinctively we knew that whatever was down there would catch us if we had to shimmy back through the small pipes to get out the way we came in. So we ran. 
hard, flashlight beams bouncing off the walls, until we finally started seeing light from where the tunnel emptied into the pond. One by one we all reached the drop and just kept running into thin air, falling into the pond below. I was terrified of heights and I didn't even know how to swim, but that didn't stop me. As I was making my way to land my brother and his friends came shooting out of the pipe and into the pond. For a moment I thought they had been playing a prank on us, but no, my brother immediately insisted that we all go home. He wouldn't even tell me what happened on the entire, dripping wet, almost a mile walk. The whole group went to my house and my brother, knowing we would all get in trouble, told my mother where we were and what we had been doing. He also told her that when he and his friends reached the next junction in the tunnel they were exploring, they came across a spot where light was trickling in from above. There was a pile of trash and debris built up around one of those half-pipe prison bar grates, and laying within that pile of trash, they saw a man, who upon hearing them, raised his head, reached out towards them, and started crawling out of the trash in their direction. So they ran. My mother called the police. They asked my brother to guide them to the location in the pipes where this happened. They found exactly what he described, but the man was gone. Within minutes there were at least a dozen police cars around our neighborhood with people and dogs searching the drainage system. They wouldn't tell us any details, but we do know that they never found the man. The dogs followed his scent to the end of the pipe at the pond but they never picked up the scent anywhere on the ground around the pond or creek. As far as I know, none of us ever went into the storm drains again. My friend almost fell off a four-story building. There were four of us out at an abandoned Raider base filming a music video for one of my classes and there is a part where you can jump down from the roof to another part that is slightly lower. Now it's a more narrow kind of landing area and as he jumped down, he landed weird on his foot and swerved off to the side and was less than an inch or so from falling off before he caught his balance and landed on his knees on the roof. Everyone else carefully climbed down that ledge instead of jumping after. That? As kids my cousin and I went exploring in an abandoned old church. He, being the more adventurous of the two, had decided to go climbing and seeing if he could get on top of the roof. Well, it wasn't exactly stable and luckily he didn't get all the way to the top when he fell. He copped a nasty gash on his leg in the process though. And it was a long walk back to our grandmother's house to get attended to, purely because we kept stopping. Needless to say we were banned from exploring since. Not seriously wrong but I was pretty scared. I was around 10 years old or so. I went into this not that old abandoned building with two of my friends. They were boys. We explored the building and got down to the basement and we met some boys from 9th grade and we went with them. We got pretty deep into the basement and then all of a sudden a woman starts to scream. We couldn't see anybody since it was very dark. We had flashlights and flashed around the room. Keep in mind I was the only girl with a group of boys and my friends. We just ran out after that as the screaming continued. We all agreed to never enter again. It was a really old house in the woods. Pretty sure there was a fire or something because there was a stone slab and chimney next to the house where place used to be with fire damage. Three of us wanted to see what was in the place so we started exploring. Some ruined furniture was still there and moth-eaten carpet. Coolest thing and there was an old wooden chair with some impressive carving work. We ventured upstairs and that is when things went wrong. Two steps in and creek cracked the floor split open and my buddy's leg went through. Lucky for him he had jeans on and nothing got broken. We decided not to check out the rest of the place and made our way out of the woods before it got dark. I was walking through the fourth floor of an abandoned orphanage in the chapel and the only light I had to guide me was faint from the video camera before smartphones, and as I pointed it down to routinely light the floor to check. I was a foot away from stepping into a giant hole I the floor almost 2 meters wide dropping down below. My heart dropped and then a freaking bat flew overhead of me and scared the shit out of me as well. Explored an abandoned school, the place was boarded up so we technically had to break in but the roof was caving in and the power was cut. We got into the gym and triggered an alarm that was apparently on some kind of backup power and we all had to squeeze through a small opening row rush back out. We used to play airsoft king of the hill games in an old early 1900s mansion that had been abandoned since the 80s in the Illinois cornfields. We never went deep into the basement because it was partially flooded and at the same time gave everyone a very weird feeling when we would get to the bottom of the steps. Well one day we decided to play a night game and the whole vibe of the house was off. It felt like there was someone standing right behind you the entire time and we kept hearing noises and sloshing water coming from the basement so we booked it out of there and as we were leaving we all swear we saw a light come on really quick. Up in the attic and then go dark. Took two steps into the doorway and a gigantic banana spider crawled right onto my face. I knocked myself backwards out of the place just hitting myself in the face to get it off. After that I decided that was enough of that noise. Please subscribe if you liked the video. It really helps the channel to grow. See you again.